Let me start by, by saying this. It has been a struggle to prepare this word. Um, but I believe that it is a timely word for now as we as a people understand the times that we are in. I would have seen pastor on Friday and I asked him, um, you ready to preach Sunday morning? <laughs> he said, but by the rain tell me that um, you, 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 you ministering. I said, yeah, but I feel like and just how I put my face, that's how I put my face. <laughs> he said, man, you can be good, man. Do what, do what he's do. I said, nothing. Uh, do I nothing? <laughs> right. So, last week, my, my topic for this morning is, you have been called. You have been called. Last week, Brother Ryan would have spoken a good word. For those of us who would have heard it, and his topic was, lest we forget. You know, and he reminded us that it's possible for us to forget. So sometimes we need something to remind us, for us to reflect on. So this morning, I want to remind us that we have been called. You see, and I'm going to take my text from Ephesians chapter 4. I'm not sure if Brother Ray, uh, Fabian got the, and this will be from the Amplified Bible. So this morning I want to remind us that we are called, all of us, every single one of us, have been called for a purpose. You know, we're not here by accident. It's not that God just decided, uh, let me just save this person. There's a purpose for all of us. There's a purpose for all of us. And Paul says in Ephesians 4 and verse 1 from the Amplified Bible, So I, the prisoner for the Lord, appeal to you to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. That is to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, and mature behavior, a life that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. He says, we are to live a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called. So we have been called we have been summoned by God. The day we said yes to God, a call was put on our life for something different. We have unbelievers that are here for purpose. As they come into their purpose, as they come into their relationship with God, that purpose will be fulfilled to the utmost. But we as believers, as we have said yes to God, we are beginning to behave differently. Our standard goes up. The Good News Bible says, I urge you then, I urge you then, I who am a prisoner because I serve the Lord, live a life that measures up to the standard God set when he called you. So we was just not called by God, Hilly Billy. However, God just decided, man, I think I should save them by royal people, man, because I ain't really got nothing to do. I think I, could, I should save Jefferson, because he could do, no, there was a purpose. There is still a purpose for our calling. Some of us might have been Save for 40 years, some for 20, some for two days. But there is a purpose. What is our purpose for this calling? Why did God identify us? Why did he 
in all his wisdom decided that it is good for us to partner with him for the building up of his kingdom. Why did God see it suitable to call us? Is it just to save us? Is it just for us to make it into heaven? I don't think so. I personally don't think so. As Bish was speaking just now about what is happening in our country, Barbados, we should have been stirred up within our spirit to understand that it goes beyond just getting saved. We, are, we were not called just to be saved. We were not called just to come at Psalters and sit in the pew. We have been called for a purpose. There are boys and girls out there, there are men and women out there that don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. We've been called to witness to them. We've been called to encourage the brethren, those that even know Christ. We've been called to encourage them to continue to hold on, to continue to walk this walk in faith. All of us have not been called to the position of pastorship. All of us have not been called in the position to be bishops or elders. But we all have been called to serve Almighty God, to tell somebody to show somebody how good God has been to us. It is okay for us to say there's hope in Christ. It is all right to say there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But do they see that in our walk? Do they hear it in our conversations? Are we showing others the goodness of God in our lives. It is not that issues wouldn't come. It is not that we will not falter or fall at a point. But it is that we say when we arise, but God. There goes me if not for the goodness of God. You see, God has called us because we're to connect with somebody else. We're to tell others about God. Judy Christie says, you are not here by accident today. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. She continues to say that people are so afraid of failing. And as we look into scripture, we can see men who were afraid of the call that God would have placed on their life. And they all had excuses, just like us today. Moses can speak properly. God, me? Not me. But I can't talk good. I don't know what you can say. We, we, we can see this man. We saw Abraham. We saw men like, 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 like Noah. We saw... Joshua, we saw Gideon. We see these men with excuses. Because scripture reminds us that there were human just like us. There is nothing that happens today that didn't happen before. We believe at times that we are exempt. We believe at times that all the problems in the world is only for Glendine. I got all the worries in this world. You see, God has called us out of darkness. I can identify with being in a dark place. In a place where I didn't have no concern about God, even though, as the old people say, this part of my neighbor's string berry. I raised and born inside the Southern Church of God. I, I, I recited. I sing songs. Well, you know what I mean when I say sing songs, right? Um, you know, you sing, you sing because you come up and start the school. Not really that I sing from here lustily like the, like, 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 like the singers. But I live a life without Christ. I live a life doing as I please. 
because there was no connection between me and God. I heard about him in Sunday school, thanks to my Sunday school teachers, God rest Reverend Marshall and those in the grave that would have set an example before me. But I was too young, I believe. I ain't ready for not, for not, for not, for not church. Then that for the old women and the old men in church. I ain't about that. I could have been hush and gone. But God called me out of darkness. He called me for a mighty long way. So that I can say to somebody, come, taste, see, come into a relationship. The same thing that God could, if God could save me, he could do it for you. And that is what Peter the Apostle would have said to us in 1 Peter 2 and 9, that God have called us out of darkness. Then Paul in Galatians 5 and 13 would have said that he has called us to live in freedom. The word of God says to us not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. God has lifted the yoke of bondage out of our lives so that we can live in freedom. So that we can live regardless of what is happening around us. We can live with the assurance that we are in a relationship with Christ who died for our sins. 2 Timothy 1 and 9 says that we have been called with a holy calling. So you see, it wasn't just me picking up my phone and calling and saying, Michelle, girl, how did you going? I want you to do so and so for me. It was a holy calling. It was a set aside calling. It was a set apart calling unto God for something good. Unto God for something that will benefit not only you, but the person next to you, the person in your district, the person in your household, the person in your workplace, the person at school. We have been called to repair and we build. And even as a church, as we look around and see that our membership is dwindling, we have been called to repair and rebuild. How do we connect back to these men and women, these boys and girls that would have passed through sorters as we are celebrating a hundred years here? How do we connect to them? How do we say to them, you're not here by accident. Your, your parents might not have planned you, but God has a plan for you. He still has a plan for you as long as you are alive. There is a plan for you. How do we connect to them? How can we ask them? Because sometimes we might go seek forgiveness, not for something that we might have done. And you know, people find it strange. But sometimes we might go, go to God and ask forgiveness for things that are for parents might have done, that our elders might have done to stop people from connecting to Christ. It might not be you that have hurt me. And you know, sometimes as believers, we, 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 we go home and we say, um, let, me, let, me, let me put a pin there for a minute. I remember coming up, I heard one of my uncles saying, um, that church ain't for me. I know the foolishness that they would have done to somebody. And this somebody would have died years ago. But they still remember what somebody in the church said or did to this person. And these are things that people hold on to. You did not hurt them. But you would have hurt their, somebody that was their ancestors. And, and, it, and, it, and just like life, it passed down from generation to generation. And that is what the enemy like. So they may forgive the church that ain't hurt them. The people in church that ain't even know them if they sit the past the road. As my girlfriend would say, they ain't know the next to a tree. But they hold on to that. So sometimes as a church, and we see where we are at now, we might need to seize God's forgiveness for things that might have happened. You see, when God called us, we signed up until 
every day. There is a song in our hymnals that says, I'm enlisted in his service. And it says, I am fighting in the army of the Lord. And though dangers thickly run my pathway lie, I shall never faint or fear, for my Jesus is so near. I've enlisted in his service till I die. I will press the battle on till the victory is won. And I reach my crown and mansion by and by. By the grace of God I know, I shall conquer every foe. I've enlisted in his service till I die. When we said yes to Christ, that's the vow that we made. We will serve him until we die. I am not saying that it's not comfortable sitting in the church benches and be a bench warmer. I ain't saying that. It's very comfortable. It's very comfortable and at ease singing. If I had wings like a dove, I would fly away. Or sitting and saying, when we all get to heaven, it's comfortable doing that. Because we're not out on the battlefield saying to somebody, come and know Christ. Come. We are not out there. That's for the past and Brother Ryan. They didn't go along out there. That's where they get called for them. Tell God, yes, that they want to go along. Let them go along. Not me. I can lie down here. And when Sunday morning come, I can go along cross there or go along up there. Because we don't come to church no more. No, we don't get in no more. I going up there. Or we wake up the morning. I can cross the car road gap and go along up there with them people. And because of that mindset, that is just how we behave when we come to church. It is not anymore we come into fellowship. It's not anymore we come in as a, a church to meet with God, to hear what it is he has to say to us. We're going up there or we're going down there. And sometimes we come because we don't want anybody to call us to say, oh, we miss you from church. About two Sundays now, what happened? So we come and we sit and we become comfortable. Today, in Barbados, we are celebrating Remembrance Day. Men and women who would have been to war. And they would have answered the call that they be enlisted in the army until they're dying. When you ask military people today, people in the BDF, how far they will go for their country. Their reply is, all the way even to death. What about us? Are we willing to go all the way even for, to death for our Lord? Who have called us with a holy calling? Who have set us apart for a time such as this? A time when he looked down in history years ago and know that Barbados will be in a dear state. When he would know that our ministers are trying to promote homosexuality. We have been called. God has set us aside for a time like this that we will stand and say enough is enough. Are you willing to say to me, Glendine Salmon, what you are doing is foolishness. You call yourself a Christian, yet still you're shacking up. Are you willing to say to me, you can't go to work and can't wear the people time because you're still TV? Are you willing to say to me, you can't sit down and talk to Sister Irma name with Rufan because it is gossip? And scripture says that these will not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you willing to say it? Or because you are my friend, you're saying, well, I don't want to offend. You have been called for a time like this. When we have boys and girls going to school and can't go to nosy bathroom because they are scared. That who are the urine till they get home? All of them always because they are frightened to go into bathrooms. Are you in a position that you want to, do, are you afraid to tell your boss? I will not do that because it goes against my belief. It is all right where everything is going good. 
it is okay, it is fine. But it is time that we understand that we have been called for a time such as this. It is time that we understand that we have been called to stand up for righteousness. We would have played the fool too long as believers. You see, we, and, and I keep saying we because I'm included, I am guilty. I am guilty. I can say to Brother Ryan, because I know that Brother Ryan live next door to a friend of mine. I pick up my phone and I call Ryan. Bro, that girlfriend of mine that lives next door to you, she ain't feeling good. I want you to go in and check on her. And because me and Ryan is friends, Ryan is such cool. I can go. And Ryan gone. And Ryan recognized that she really ain't feeling good. But Ryan decide she's not going to die on my watch. So even though he's tired, he decide he's staying there till I get there. Are we willing to steer the course until our brothers, our sisters, our neighbor is delivered? We can switch it. I can call Ryan, and Ryan don't answer the call. Although he said to me he's going to go and check. Ryan home said it down. He said, I know I ain't going there. Can't like that. And like them, maybe we got a lot of Christians that don't like the unsaved. I don't like them. Don't let me, don't let me get, get tired. A lot of we walk around in our district with our face up because we ain't like them. We ain't like them. Get. Yeah. I ran an answer. And she died. Tell me how you think I will feel. Can I trust Ryan again? So we would have been called, and God would have given us a task. And because we don't like them, or because I'm really sure how to approach them, their fear is always sour. Again, let this one pass. You know what? God, let's share and I'll go and talk to that buddy. Because for sure, I don't want to do that. But God knows why he asked Michelle to talk to Rufan. Because there's something about Michelle. There's some way that Michelle is going to say it. That if he asks me to say it, it can lose the gist. It can lose the purpose. But Michelle can go and say to Rufan, I was thinking about you, and for some reason God lay you on my heart. I might say this, I might say the very same exact words. But I will not bring it over the same way. It will not be delivered the same way. And sometimes we forget that we are called for reasons such as this. Sometimes we forget that our, our spring is waiting for us to walk upright, to really understand our calling so that they can come to know Christ. I want to say to us this morning, you might be in a position where you're saying, I cannot tell so-and-so about Christ. Because, let me news me. I like to news me. I might be in a position where I'm saying, I can't go and tell my girlfriend Linda, let me news Linda, about Christ. Because Shakira is living in sin. But God called me to speak to Linda, not to speak to Shakira. And because of me speaking to Linda, and Linda coming to know Christ, Linda might be the connect for Shakira to come to know Christ. So sometimes we make excuses because of our loved ones. I can't do this because of my household. My household living in sin, so I can't tell nobody nothing. How many... And, and, and you know we like to know scripture. We all got scripture that we can use to show what we should. Scripture says, I got to clean the more out of my eyes, take the take out of my eyes the, before you could go and take it out of somebody else's one. And the people say, you got to clean your windows before you can clean mine. You know what I'm saying? But you can't get Penny Lada to clean your windows, sweetheart. 
God got somebody designated to clean your window. So we might need to shift from my set and think about it that I have been called to serve regardless of where this serving is. You have been called to serve. It might not even be here in Salters. Sometimes we believe because we live near a church. I don't tell them where the left Salters. Just saying. That this is where God wants you. But there might be a season that you are supposed to be here. Because God have you to go and serve somewhere else. Don't ever let your call from God stop you from working in the kingdom of God because of comfort. Some of us become so comfortable that we forget why we were called. And sometimes some of us need somebody to help us answer our call. We might need somebody to help us answer our calling. When, Christ, when God was calling Samuel, Samuel didn't know who it was, but he ran to the man of God. He ran to somebody that is an authority. He ran that to somebody that he think would be the body calling him. It's a possibility that Eli might be the person that calling me. And we need at times to connect with persons that are connected to Christ. So that when the call has been placed upon our lives, they to understand and they decide, I'm going to petition God on your behalf so that you would walk in your purpose, so that you will find where God wants you to work within his kingdom. I want to say to us this morning, that once God has called us, he will empower us to do it. Even though the task may seem hard. Even though the task may seem like it is just your one. He with you is much more than this whole church of Salter is with you. Once God is in the midst of it, you will be able to get it due. We need at times to give up our comfort zone. I want us to put fear aside. I want us to declare, God, you have called me. I will serve you. Wherever you lead, I will go. Yes, it is all right for Glenny to say that. Yes, it is all right. Because Glenny ain't doing it. So why she want me to do it? You know, people might be seeing that. I want us to understand. We will walk. Sometimes we might go to a baby step. Sometimes it might be spending two minutes in prayer. Some of us might be saying, again, it don't age, that's for the young people. But God might just call you to intercede. It might be a night where they have prayer meeting. Or Bible study, and, and for some reason you didn't get on. You can use that time to pray, trusting God that those that within will learn something will be willing to go the extra mile for Christ. I want to say to us this morning, if you don't remember anything else, I want to say to us, to walk worthy of your calling. Let us walk right before God. Second Chronicles 29, 11 says to us, my sons, and this could be my daughters, I'll say my children, do not neglect your duties any longer. The Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister to him, and to lead the people in worship and present offerings to him. I want to say to every single one of us here this morning and online, walk upright, walk according to your calling. Understand that you were called for a purpose. 
their boys and girls out there that is willing and waiting to come into the kingdom of God. But they're waiting for us. They're waiting for us to call. They're waiting for us to knock on the door. They're waiting for us to come. They're waiting for us to send a text. They're waiting for us to just make, say a good morning, good afternoon. Can I help you with something? Your call is not mine. You are required to answer your calling. And just in case you have forgotten what your call has been, Remember who have called you so you can tap into them. You can seek Christ and ask him to stir up the fire again. Letting him know that you are willing to go the extra mile. You are willing to answer. Here am I, Lord, send me. Be blessed.